Hello everyone. In this video on fatty acid oxidation part 1, we are going to learn about beta oxidation of fatty acids. At the end of this video, you should be able to describe beta oxidation of even carbon chain fatty acids, for example, palmitic acid with its energetics and regulation. Beta oxidation of fatty acid is the major pathway of catabolism of fatty acids. Why it is called beta oxidation of fatty acid? Because the oxidation and splitting of two carbon units occur at the beta carbon atom. This is the fatty acid chain and the numbering of carbon atom starts from the carboxylic end. So this is the carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 and the second carbon is also represented as alpha carbon and the third carbon is beta carbon. So oxidation and splitting occurs here at the beta carbon and that's why it is called as beta oxidation of fatty acids. When does it occur? In condition of fasting, starvation and diabetes mellitus. There is lipolysis in the adipose tissue that is TAG is broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids are transported to the peripheral tissue. They are activated and through carnitine shuttle they enter mitochondria. So beta oxidation occurs in mitochondria. It is the mitochondrial pathway. And what are the end products of beta oxidation? Acetyl-CoA and the reducing equivalents like NADH and FADH2. Acetyl-CoA undergoes TCA cycle to form a reducing equivalents and which later through the electron transport chain ATP is generated. What are the stages of beta oxidation of fatty acids? The first is activation of fatty acids into cytosol. The fatty acids need to be activated prior to their oxidation. So it occurs in the cytosol. Then that activated fatty acid is transported from cytosol to mitochondria by carnitine transport system. So the activated fatty acids, the activation occurs in cytosol and from cytosol they are transported to the mitochondria by carnitine transport system because the activated fatty acid cannot directly enter the mitochondria. So carnitine system is required for the transport. Third is proper beta oxidation of fatty acids in the mitochondria. So these are three important stages of beta oxidation of fatty acids. Let's begin with the stage one that is activation of fatty acids and it occurs in cytosol. So the fatty acids gets activated to form acyl CoA. There is addition of coenzyme A here and this process occurs with the help of enzyme acyl CoA synthetase. This enzyme is also called as thiokinase. In this process, magnesium is required and ATP is also required. So ATP is converted into AMP and pyrophosphate. And later on, this pyrophosphate is hydrolyzed to form inorganic phosphate. And the energy from hydrolysis of pyrophosphate drives the reaction forward. And that's why two high energy bonds are utilized in this reaction. And this is the only step in fatty acid oxidation in which the ATP is required. So two high energy bonds means two ATP are utilized in this reaction. This is the stage one that is activation of fatty acids in, in the cytosol. Stage two is transport of acyl-CoA into mitochondria by carnitine transport system. Acyl-CoA cannot be transported through inner mitochondrial membrane directly and that's why it requires carnitine transport system. This is the schematic representation which shows this is the mitochondrial membrane. This one is outer mitochondrial membrane. This one is inner mitochondrial membrane. This is the mitochondrial matrix and this is cytosolic side. Carnitine acyl transferase 1 is located on outer mitochondrial membrane. Carnitine acyl transferase 2 is located on inner mitochondrial membrane. This is the translocase protein through which carnitine and acyl carnitine are transported. So the acyl-CoA which cannot be traversed through inner mitochondrial membrane, there is transfer of acyl group from this acyl-CoA to this carnitine by the action of enzyme carnitine acyl transferase 1 which is located on outer mitochondrial membrane. This carnitine is synthesized in the liver and kidney from lysine and methionine and when acyl group is transferred from acyl-CoA to carnitine, it becomes acyl carnitine and coenzyme A is formed. Now this acyl carnitine 
can be easily transported in the mitochondrial matrix through this translocase. Now this acylcarnitine has to be trapped inside the mitochondrial matrix as it can be transported back to the cytosol. So there is addition of coenzyme A and by the action of enzyme carnitine acyl transferase 2 again there is formation of acyl CoA and carnitine. Now this carnitine then is transported to cytosol. Now this acyl CoA which is in the mitochondrial matrix it is further oxidized by beta oxidation. Step 3 is oxidation of fatty acids in mitochondria. Once Acyl CoA is inside the mitochondria. It is further degraded by a repeated sequence of four reactions. The first is dehydrogenation, which involves FAD. Second is hydration. Third is again dehydrogenation, which involves NAD. And fourth is cleavage. Now let's see how beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria. This is the fatty acyl CoA. This is alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon. So the splitting and oxidation occurs here at the beta carbon. First step is dehydrogenation step. It occurs with the help of enzyme acyl CoA dehydrogenase. It is dehydrogenation reaction and it, it occurs on this fatty acyl CoA. That's why the name of enzyme is acyl CoA dehydrogenase. FADE is reduced to FADH2 and when this FADH2 enters electron transport chain it is oxidized to form 1.5 ATP and this fatty acyl CoA in this first step is dehydrogenated to form alpha beta unsaturated fatty acyl CoA or it is also called as delta square delta 2 trans enoyl CoA. In this dehydrogenation reaction there is removal of two hydride ions from here and that's why there is formation of double bond between alpha and beta carbon atom and as there is the unsaturation occurs here it is called as alpha beta unsaturated fatty acyl CoA and it is called as delta 2 because this is carbon 2 and this is carbon 3 and the double bond is between carbon 2 and 3 that's why it is called as delta 2 trans enoyl CoA trans because the position of hydrogen is in the, they are in the trans position and that's why it is called as delta 2 trans enoyl CoA. That's, next step is hydration. Enoyl CoA, now the substrate is enoyl CoA and the reaction is hydration. That's why which the enzyme which plays important role here is enoyl CoA hydrate, hydratase. So there will be addition of water molecule to form beta hydroxy fatty acyl CoA. Now here one hydrogen atom is attached to the alpha carbon and hydroxyl group is attached to this beta carbon and that's why as the hydroxyl group is attached to the beta carbon it is called as beta hydroxy fatty acyl CoA. So the first step was dehydrogenation, second step was hydration. Third step is dehydrogenation which involves NAD. And this beta hydroxy fatty acyl CoA is dehydrogenated to form beta keto fatty acyl CoA. Two hydride atoms from here they are removed and NAD is reduced to form NADH plus H plus. And as two hydride ions are removed from here the keto group is formed at beta position and that's why it is called as beta keto fatty acyl CoA. The NADH which is formed is oxidized through electron transport chain to form 2.5 ATP. The fourth step is cleavage and it occurs with the help of enzyme thiolase and it requires coenzyme A. So after this fourth step the acetyl CoA molecule is cleaved which, which is two carbon compound and that's why the fatty acyl CoA is now shortened by two carbon atoms and this Fatty acyl CoA which is shortened by two carbon atoms again undergoes beta oxidation of fatty acid and with every cycle there is removal of two carbon unit acetyl CoA and that's, that's how process continues until acetyl CoA molecules are formed. Palmitol CoA undergoes beta oxidation. Uh, Palmitol CoA is 16 carbon compound and it undergoes seven cycles of beta oxidation with successive re removal of two carbon units to form 8 acetyl CoA and as there are 7 cycles 7 NADH and 7 FADH2 are formed. 
so if this is a palmitoyl coa and this is the first cycle this split it, it is the first cycle which removes first acetyl coa so if you count the number of splits 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 so for 16 carbon palmitoyl coa there are seven splits so seven cycles of beta oxidation and if you count two carbon acetyl coa molecule so this represent 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so 116 carbon palmitoyl coa is oxidized to form 8 acetyl coa molecule and as there are seven cycles seven nadh and seven fadh2 are formed this is the overall process of beta oxidation of palmitic acid which has 16 carbons now let's understand the energetics of beta oxidation of palmitic acid that is how much atp is are generated we know that palmitoyl coa is a 16 carbon compound and it generates 8 acetyl coa on oxidation plus 7 nadh and 7 fadh2 one acetyl coa is oxidized to form 10 atp one nadh is oxidized in electron transport chain to form 2.5 atp and one fadh2 is oxidized to form 1.5 atp so in this process eight acetyl coa molecules are generated so one acetyl coa 10 atp so eight acetyl coa 80 atp is are generated seven nadh multiplied by 2.5 because one nadh generates 2.5 atp so there is formation of 17.5 atp by seven nadh molecules seven fadh2 multiplied by 1.5 will generate 10.5 atp so gross total is 108 atp but in the first step of activation of fatty acids to fatty acyl coa there is utilization of two high energy bonds the two atps are required so net yield is 108 minus 2 atp that is 106 atp so on oxidation of palmitic acid there is formation of 106 atps how beta oxidation is regulated it is regulated by regulating the carnitine acyl transferase one enzyme it is the rate limiting enzyme of the beta oxidation this carnitine acyl transferase one is enzyme is located on the outer mitochondrial membrane and it is regulated by malonyl coa which is the intermediate formed in the fatty acid synthesis insulin and glucagon play very important role insulin is the hormone of well fed condition and glucagon is the hormone of fasting condition fasting and starvation second is the regulation of beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase so let's see how the regulation of beta oxidation occurs carnitine acyl transferase one enzyme is regulated by malonyl coa in the well fed condition beta oxidation of fatty acid is decreased insulin is the hormone of well fed state and it causes dephosphorylation of the enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase which is the regulatory enzyme of fatty acid synthesis this acetyl coa carboxylase is responsible for formation of malonyl coa from acetyl coa so in the well fed condition there is increased formation of malonyl coa and this malonyl coa it inhibits the enzyme carnitine acyl transferase one which is located on outer mitochondrial membrane and this carnitine acyl transferase one is responsible for entry of fatty acyl coa in the mitochondrial matrix and as this malonyl coa inhibit this carnitine acyl transferase one fatty acyl coa cannot enter mitochondria so beta oxidation is inhibited so in the well fed condition fatty acid synthesis is favored there is increased concentration of malonyl coa which inhibits carnitine acyl transferase one and beta oxidation of fatty acid is decreased because fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation cannot occur simultaneously in the starvation there is increased oxidation of fatty acids because glucagon and epinephrine they are the hormones of fasting and starvation and they activate the enzyme hormone sensitive lipase by phosphorylating it and there is increase in lipolysis more fatty acids are formed from triacylglycerol and fatty acids are activated to form fatty acyl coa and this fatty acyl coa they are the allosteric inhibitor of acetyl coa carboxylase the enzyme 
which forms malonyl CoA from acetyl CoA. And as this enzyme acetyl CoA carboxylase is inhibited, there is decreased concentration of malonyl CoA. And now the decreased concentration of malonyl CoA. So the malonyl CoA is not able to inhibit this carnitine acyl transferase 1 due to its low concentration. So the inhibitory effect of malonyl CoA on carnitine acyl transferase 1 is removed. And now fatty acyl CoA can enter the mitochondrial matrix with the help of carnitine shuttle and fatty acids can be oxidized. So this is how in starvation under the influence of glucagon beta oxidation of fatty acid is increased. Regulation of beta hydroxyacyl CoA dehydrogenase. In the well fed condition, there is high energy charge in the cell that is increased NADH to NAD ratio and there is increased ATP to ADP ratio and this increased ratio will inhibit this beta hydroxyacyl CoA dehydrogenase. So, in the well fed condition, beta oxidation is reduced.